April the 29th, 2017 was an important date in county's recent history as Jim Gannon's men chased the victory over Gloucester City. They hoped would be enough to pick Chorley for the final playoff spot in the Conference North table. And by a strange quirk of fate, April the 29th was also the day back in 1967 when Stockport County travelled to Wrexham to gain the point they needed to be crowned fourth division champions with Johnny Price and Bert Lister scoring the goals in a two-all draw that sparked ecstatic scenes amongst more than 4,000 travelling fans. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of this wonderful achievement, eight of the surviving members of one of county's greatest ever teams returned for the Gloucester game to receive an emotional welcome from the Blue and White Army. So dominant were County in 1966-67, the championship was won with three games still to play, with a team that included the legendary names of Johnny Price, Len Allchurch, Ken Mulhern, Billy Haydock, Bill Atkins, and two veteran defenders, Matt Woods and Eddie Stewart, who made it quite clear in pre-season just what they expected from their teammates. When we stood together at the start of the season, Matt Woods and Eddie Stewart, they said that, uh, well, if we can't win the league with this lot, we deserve shooting. And of course we did. We had that mentality that went through, particularly at the back, with Billy Adop, Matt Woods, Eddie Stewart, Peter Jones, Freddie Goodwin. Uh, we were hard to score against. And of course the forwards did their job, but we won a lot of games about one or two none, didn't we? Um, defensively, um, with the three at the back, the big, the big, uh, big Matt Woods and Eddie Stewart, goalkeeper, terrific goalkeeper. Um, I went to City, so that proved how good he yeah. was. Both fullbacks were good, strong, two great wingers, and two two good strikers. Um, big Billy when he when he was playing as well. But yeah, I mean, generally all round. I mean, they keep saying about teams, oh, they're not very good at the back, but they're terrific up front. Um, but we had it all. We actually did have it all. Oh, that was a brilliant team. They were, you know, Matt Woods and Eddie Stewart, um, Lenny Oldchurch, who was my favourite player of all time there. We had Johnny Price. We had a really good side, really strong back core and uh, some good attacking players. We were very, very difficult to beat. I thought we had the balance of the team correct to our... Uh, we had uh, older players in the, in the side, but not too many older players. Good, old, experienced players. And we also had uh, youthful players, uh, and the balance seemed to be right. It was a smashing team. The good thing about it was the plenty of experience in the team. Good defenders, Eddie Stewart and Matt Woods and uh, the rest of the boys. Uh, yeah, it's a smashing team. Plenty of experience, which is important when you're try to get promotion and stuff like that, yeah. As a tribute to the champions, Jim Gannon's team wore an exact replica of the iconic 1967 title-winning kit, with the sleeve of each shirt printed with the name of the county player who wore the corresponding number at the racecourse ground 50 years earlier. And history looked to be repeating itself when Danny Lloyd, wearing the same number 11 worn by Bert Lister when he headed the title-winning goal at Wrexham, gave County the lead from the penalty spot. With Chorley losing, the Hatters now occupied the final playoff spot, but a Gloucester equaliser 16 minutes later ended promotion hopes for another season. Players past and present, though, were quick to praise the County fans' amazing support. The fans have been absolutely brilliant. I mean, their reaction at the end of the game, you know... That's it just... what I was going to say. I mean, for, for a, you know, given what's... The bigger picture yeah, today. Yeah. What a reaction from the supporters at the end there. They're, they're cheering straight from the final whistle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that's a testament to them. And you know they've been right behind us mm. um, from the from the start of the season. And I like to think, um, obviously, we've we've given them something to to shout about. And yeah. you know they've obviously turned out in numbers this year. And you know I don't think <coughs> there's not many uh, League Two, League One clubs apart from obviously just big ones. You know that can and sort of boast that kind of support. The support here, um, they get behind you and it is lifting and uh, it, it's, it's like having, uh, well, another, <laughs> well, I, I, won't, I won't know how to describe it, superb, mm. superb.
great atmosphere, wonderful atmosphere. And as I say, we always got over 10,000 people here, 12, 13 sometimes, and a great atmosphere. Uh, really enjoyed it. Well, it was exciting. It was a very glamorous time because a lot of the people from the other clubs used to come and, and the scouts and, and different things. And it was a glamorous time. And of course, we dragged in Luke at the time. We used to go back to the Belgrade and the different clubs to Bredbury Hall. And it was a glamorous time as well as a football time. And it was one of the best times in my life. To, to come here and play Friday night football, it was very, very new, new for me. But it was new for the club and it was a risk. And the, the fans, uh, I don't know, do they shout louder at night? I don't know. The, the, the support was absolutely fantastic. Um, and it was, it, was, it was absolutely unbelievable. But yeah, it was good fun. And, the, and we were on a ride, we was, we was on a big ride. It was, uh, it was, it was wonderful, it just, it just kept going and going and going. I can remember playing in front of 15,000. Not every week, but uh, it was maybe about 12,000 uh, to, to 15,000. It's terrific and, and uh, it gives you such a, a buzz. And the old uh, stadium is, uh, is, is buzzing and uh, it's, it's superb. County fans would also play their part in helping to make Keith Allen's return to Edgley Park a day he will never forget. Unable to find him for previous reunions, county historian Marcus Heap eventually tracked him down by travelling to the Isle of Wight and knocking on doors. When Keith, who joined Luton Town just weeks before the end of the championship season, revealed he'd never received his title medal. Marcus made a call to the Football League and they agreed a special concession for the medal to be reproduced at a cost of over £700. On hearing the news, county fans raised all the money needed in less than 24 hours to enable an emotional Keith to finally receive his gold medal after waiting half a century. But today I've had a wonderful day and that has made it for me. That is just... I had tears in my eyes when I was given it and I thank the club and everyone connected with it, you especially and, and uh, Marcus and uh, I'll treasure it. Well when we got the news that you might not be coming <laughs> and I had to, to thought oh my god I had to ring Jackie yesterday yeah. said, whatever you do you can't tell Keith <laughs> and uh, explain I the situation. No about I know she couldn't tell me and of course she told her brother but told her brother to keep it quiet of course I knew nothing about it but um, well, it was a great surprise and I've had a wonderful day and it's, uh, I really hope, just finished badly but never mind, um, I hope they can do it next year. Uh, it's got the obviously the basis of a good, very, very good side and support is amazing as it ever was.